Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I am going to teach an hour yoga class. I, I um, tried to record my class yesterday and I just somehow managed to not press the record. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, eventually I'm going to sit on the mat and that's when I'm going to start teaching. So all of this, yeah, so I've been, uh, if you've been with me any other day this week, I've been doing this like pretty slow uh, sequence, which has been great. I've loved it, honestly. And it was like exactly how I wanted to move and that's why I taught class that way. But uh, right now, I'm not feeling that. It's Wednesday evening, I don't have the focus to move that slow right now. Um, and also we're trying to keep it in the 60 minute format. So it just lends itself to a different kind of movement. So uh, in this hour, this is about, this is probably gonna be about as close to a flow sequence as I'm gonna get. Um, you know me, I'm not, <laughs> flow, flow ain't my thing, but uh, we'll probably end up doing a few sun salutations today. So um, if that's not what you want, be honest with yourself. You can go take another class. I've got lots of them. Um, let, you know, yesterday, Tuesday, uh, Cinco de Mayo class was uh, quite slow paced. So. Uh, if that's the pace you're, you're, you'd prefer, you think this is suitable for your energy level at this moment, then um, yeah, perhaps that's, that's going to be a better option today. So a uh, viewer who just viewed in, logged in, um, I'm going to do a little quicker paced class today, at least in my mind it's going to be quicker paced. Um, I don't think I'm actually capable of going all that fast. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's, let's be open to uh, the possibilities of this next hour. Okay, I'm going to start recording on my phone. So here we go. We are going to begin class today in a comfortable seated position. So get as comfortable as you can with what you have around you. So if you have a blanket or a couple blankets or a firm pillow to sit on, uh, that's usually a good option for most people. So generally I request that your knees are lower than your pelvic crests because that's going to help your inner thighs release and that's going to make your whole low back feel better. Um, so find your com comfortable cross-legged seat, place your hands on your thighs, and close your eyes. Invite yourself here into this space. So not only the space of the room, but the space of the space of time that you have set aside for this practice. Invite yourself here. And as you have made the commitment to come to seated on your mat, to show up for this practice, um, tell yourself it's okay. It's okay to be present here. It's okay to just notice your body, notice your breath, do all these different shapes. Just be present with that and focus here. Settle down through your legs and hips. Notice all of those spaces where your body is making contact with the surfaces below you. Energetically root down through those spaces. You might visualize roots growing from your body, reaching down through the floor, reaching down so far until they touch the earth. From that energetic connection between your body and the earth, Grow tall, lift up out of your waistline, long spine. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears to actively lengthen the sides of your body. 
and then loop your shoulder blades together behind your heart. As you contract the upper back muscles, the chest will broaden and lift. Release the forearms down, allowing the shoulder blades to slide down the back side of your chest. With this attention to opening the heart, the head may have tilted back to lengthen the neck, tilt the chin down parallel to the floor and ease the sides of your neck back to align your head over your heart. Bring a fingertip or two to your upper abdomen. You might create a tone there by drawing your left and right front lower ribs in towards a central point and then subtly moving that point towards your spine, creating a strength at your center and more length through the low back, hand back to the thigh. And turn your attention to your breath. Breathe in and out through your nostrils. And just by turning your attention to your breath, it would be very hard not to start to change your breath, not to start to manipulate it. So I invite you to begin to change the breath. More air in with your inhalation, more air out with your exhalation. Begin Ujjayi Pranayama by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat. So with this contraction, you're essentially shrinking the area through which you draw air into your lungs and allow air to escape your body, giving you more control over the pace, the depth, the duration of each breath. Again, invite yourself into this space, into this breath, into this moment. So this initial seated position, the attention to the breath, it's kind of an establishment of the practice. We're establishing presence. The practice is about being present in the body, with the mind, as we move ourselves through all these different shapes. Surrender to an observation of your breath. Let's do our box breath this evening. So we'll do four rounds. I'll, I'll uh, lead you through two rounds. And remember the box breath has, is a four part breath. Uh, it's an inhale, a hold, lungs full, an exhale, and hold the lungs empty. And we're gonna do each of that, those four parts for four counts. Exhale, empty your lungs, and inhale for one, two, three, four. Fill and hold. You might tilt your chin for one, two, three, four. Exhale with control. One, two, three, four. Hold the lungs empty. Maybe draw in and up on your pelvic floor. Mula Bandha. One, two, three, four. Second round. Inhale. One, two, three, four, fill and hold, tilt the chin, one, two, three, four, empty the lungs with control, one, two, three, four, hold the lungs empty, Mula Bandha, one, two, three, four, two more rounds with your own count,
Once you have completed your four rounds of box breath, please draw your palms together in front of your heart. Please join me in chanting the mantra OM three times. Exhale your breath and inhale for OM. your palms to your thighs then slowly lift your head okay <laughs> I'm just laughing to myself because during that last ohm I felt a little like I was gonna go into a gorilla sound like oh ah! I guess that's a Tarzan sound okay we're gonna switch the cross of the legs bring the right hand behind left hand crosses to the right thigh inhale to grow tall and exhale begin to revolve can you think about the posture moving from the inside of your body to the outside of the body? Starting from, starting from that revolution around the spine, around the central channel. Hug your right shoulder blade onto the back of your chest. You might draw the left head of the arm bone gently away from the left ear to experience a trapezius stretch along the left side. Keep your chin parallel to the floor as you lead the gaze over the right shoulder with the left eye. Keep your left hand where it is and extend your right arm up along your right ear, reaching out of your right waistline. And then as you exhale, lean the upper body over the left thigh, keeping the right, excuse me, keeping the right hip tapped down, reach out through the right fingertips, and with the left hand, draw the left shoulder, left chest, left side of the ribs forward. Perhaps look up to the ceiling beyond the right tricep muscles, softening the edges of your face, the edges of your mouth, relaxing the jaw, breathing uh, length and awareness along the right side body. Inhale, come back to center, and we're just gonna frame the right thigh with both hands and start to round the spine over the right thigh. Reach out through the left fingertips, tuck the chin to the chest, forehead towards or to the knee. So left side of the waistline now shifting towards the right thigh. And then slowly round back up. Left hand behind, right hand crosses to the left thigh, inhale, grow tall and exhale, revolve. Again, you might close your eyes as you start to think about moving, shifting energy, uh, muscularly shifting the inner body from right to left while the hips and the legs remain rooted. Lift up out of that rooted seat, grow tall along the spine, the taller the spine, the more space to revolve. Left shoulder on the back, right arm bone away from the right ear, chin parallel, and then you might flutter the eyes open to lead the gaze over the left shoulder. Keep the right hand where it is, left arm reaches along the left ear, and then exhale, lean the upper body over the right thigh. Use the left hand, right hand to draw the right shoulder forward, right ribs forward, turn the gaze up, and focus your attention, your breath, on the left side body. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? Can you change that feeling? Can you expand that feeling? Can you find release with your attention and with your breath? Inhale back to center. Frame the left thigh. 
and then slowly round the upper body over the left leg, keeping the right hip tacked down. You might reach out through the right fingertips, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the thigh. Breathe into the right side, breathe into the back body. Just reintroducing your, yourself to you. <laughs> Round up through the spine, and we'll just briefly fold forward. Arms walk forward, forehead melts down, hips stay rooted. And now come back up. Uncross the legs, take any padding off to the side, and come forward into a tabletop position. Place the wrists below the shoulders, spread the fingers and the palms, knees are hip width distance apart, inhale belly and chest down, tailbone and gaze, lift into your cow pose, exhale and round the spine, chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the ceiling, push the earth away, dome the upper back into cat, and inhale back to your cow pose. Listen to your body, listen to your breath. Notice what you're feeling. And then as you experience the stimulus, the stimulations of this pose, take a moment to reflect on that before you start to move, before you start to change your movement. So I often ask you to uh, start to move in such a way that your posture, your uh, movement becomes an expression of your experience. But let's pause for a moment before changing, uh, before changing, before uh, reacting. So now, what was your body communicating to you? Where were you feeling these shapes the most? Consider how you might now start to move in response to those feelings. So you might shift the hips back or side to side. You may make big circles with the hips or bend the elbows down. Ha, okay, from here, we're gonna come into a plank position. Keep your shoulders over your wrist, extend your legs back. Long line from shoulders, hips to heels. And from here, we're gonna bend the knees to the floor, tilt the tailbone up as though the low back is in cow pose, reach the chin and chest forward, and then slowly lower the chin and chest to the floor. Slide forward onto your belly, extend the legs back, press the tops of the feet down, Tone the legs to lift the kneecaps, ground the front of the pelvis, hug the shoulder blades together behind your heart, and with an inhale, curl on up to a little bitty baby cobra pose. Uh, shoulders on the back, look ma, no hands, and then begin to push your hands down. Keep your elbows in, shoulder blades on the back, shoulder blades down the back, collarbones broad, feet pressing down, toes pushing back, Lower abdomen in and back, and slowly lower down. Tuck the toes, and let's push up from the floor. So with the toes tucked, engage the legs, lengthen the tailbone, hug the shoulder blades together. With an exhale, push up to plank. Inhale and plank, and exhale, downward facing dog. Walk out your dog, as this is our first introduction to this posture today. Shift the hips from side to side and get, uh, um, communicate with the back of each leg as you straighten it. Is one leg tighter or shorter than the other? If so, spend a little bit more time on that tighter, shorter side. Listen to your body. Give your body what it's asking for, unless it's asking for something very bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was ominous. Uh, okay, 
<laughs> Am I going to recover from that? Okay, push your hands down and forward. Inhale, right leg lift straight up and back for a nice three-legged dog. Look to the top of your mat and exhale. Lunge your right foot between your hands. Set up on fingertips, fists, or blocks on either side of your front foot. So create a long stride here. Right knee over the right ankle. Right thigh parallel to the floor. Lengthen back through your left heel. Lift through your back inner thigh. And I'm going to use this pose as a, um, a base for a lot of the sequence today. I'm a lunge lover. So uh, we're going to start here with our, our basic lunge shape. I call it basic, but there's a lot to it. So notice, listen, where are you feeling? What are you feeling? Scissor the legs together, right hip pulls back as you isometrically draw the right foot back. Left outer hip wraps forward as you isometrically draw the left foot forward. Tone the legs, square the hips, broaden the collarbones. And from here, we're going to send the hips back round the spine. So similar to cat and cow, with the, uh, except with the exhale here, we're going to round the spine. And with the inhale, we're going to shift forward to our lunge, shoulders out of the ears, collarbones broad, hips low. Exhale, pyramid pose, variation. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Last one, inhale forward, and then left palm to the floor or a block, right hand to the right thigh, and begin to revolve your left ribs towards your right inner thigh to stack your shoulders. Either keep your right hand pressing against the thigh or sweep the right arm to the sky. Stack the shoulders, keep the back leg lifted deep into the lunge. Either choose to stay here or evolve the bottom ribs scoured, top ribs towards the earth, sides the neck back. And then look down, hand down, press it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg. Look to the top of your mat and exhale, lunge your left foot forward between your hands. Set up with that long stride on the second side. Hands frame the front foot, fingertips, fists, or blocks. Melt the hips down and forward so left thigh is parallel to the mat. Lift through the back inner upper thigh, reaching back through the right inner, from the inner groin out through the inner foot. Shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad, scissors legs together, right foot forward, right hip forward, left foot back, left hip back, scissor the legs, square the hips, broaden the chest, and listen. You might notice that this side is uh, expressed differently than the first side. It's very common that we notice incongruencies between the sides of our bodies, and I'm going to make a statement and say I think that's true, it's more true the older we get. <laughs> the more, it's more true the older I get. Okay, from here we're going to push the hips back, round the spine, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee. Inhale, shift the hips forward. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, forward, last time, hips go back. And inhale forward into the lunge. Right palm to the floor, left hand to the left thigh. Push your palm into your thigh as you revolve your right ribs towards your left inner thigh. Sweep the left arm up. Revolve the bottom ribs skyward, top ribs uh, towards the left wall. And either choose to stay here deep in the lunge or start to open up. Sides of the neck back, tops of the ears back. And then look down hand down, press back, downward facing dog. Okay, as, I, as promised, let's do some sun salutations today. So uh, we are going to make our transitions by either walking or hopping to the, walking, stepping, or hopping to the tops of our mats. If you have been practicing with me regularly, we've been doing some hopping lately, so let's uh, continue with that. Bend your knees, lift up onto your toes, draw back through the sides of your waistline, and then look forward, shift your shoulders forward so more weight is in your hands. Look between your hands, 
pull your belly button in towards your spine, curl the sides of your waistline with a big exhalation, hop, and land at the top of your mat. Take your feet hip width distance apart, and fold forward, hips high, head low. Inhale, bring your palms to your shins, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up, and overhead. Palms touch at the top. Exhale, hands come through heart center and arms to your sides. Inhale, look up, reach up, arms overhead. Exhale, flow forward, head releases, hands to the floor. Inhale, palms to shins, shoulder blades on the back. And exhale, fold in. Plant the hands. Step the feet back, plank position. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin to the floor. Inhale, curl up, cobra pose. Exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes, tone the legs, shoulder blades on the back. With your next exhale, push up to plank. Inhale and plank. And exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat and exhale, lunge your right foot between your hands. Same lunge that we did last time. This time, hands to hips, elbows towards the ceiling. Draw back through the sides of the waistline to come up. So now we're in a high lunge. Lengthen the tailbone, lift the heart, roll the shoulders back, keep the hips low. Right thigh parallel, left inner thigh lifted. Arms at your sides, shoulder blades back, palms forward, inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, open the chest towards the right wall. Inhale, center. Exhale, revolve the chest, open towards the right wall, arms down to the height of the shoulders. Inhale, center, last time. Exhale, open right. Inhale, center. And exhale, hands frame the front foot, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge the left foot between your hands. Create your stride. Sink the hips low. Hands to hips, elbows towards the ceiling, shoulder blades on the back. Draw back through the sides of the waistline. Keep scissoring the legs in. Right outer hip wraps forward, left outer hip wraps back. Tailbone lengthens down. Chest open, arms to your sides. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, open left. Inhale, face center, arms overhead. Exhale, arms open up, chest revolves left. Inhale, lift. Exhale, left. Inhale, lift. And exhale, hands frame the front foot. Send it back, plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale all the way down to your belly. Inhale, prepare the legs, lift the kneecaps, hug the shoulders. Exhale, push up from the floor, plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale back, downward facing dog, three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last biggest breath in. Bend the knees, lift, the, uh, lift onto the toes, draw back through the sides of the waistline, shift the shoulders forward, look forward, exhale, and arrive at the top of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale, palms to shins, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up, and overhead, look up, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Inhale, sweep up, look up, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, palms to shins. And exhale, fold, step back, plank position. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower down, shutter under our knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, all the way back down onto your belly. Engage the legs, shoulders on the back. Push down into the earth, lift up into plank, inhale plank. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat and exhale, lunge your right foot between your hands once again. 
This time, variation, left knee to the floor. Scissor the legs in, right heel back, left knee forward, square the hips. Hands to the front thigh, interlace your fingers, press your chest up, collarbones broad, lower spine long, and then begin to melt your hips down and forward, keeping the legs scissoring in. So there's a drawing in, right heel back, left knee forward, and there's expansion out. In, expansion, contraction. Lower ribs in back, tailbone down, chest lifts, arms to your sides. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. And if you'd like, start to look up. Take your arms back behind your ears. Lift the heart, look back, curl back. Lift the heart, look back, curl back. And then come forward with the chest, come forward with the arms. Hands frame the front foot. And then we're going to walk the right foot out to the right a couple of inches to bring both hands to the inside of the right leg. So either choose to stay here, hugging the right knee into the right shoulder, or begin to bring the right forearm to the floor, possibly left forearm to the floor. Hands can be uh, in prayer or interlaced. Hug the right knee to the right shoulder. Choose to stay here or lift the back inner thigh, back, back knee off of the floor, lifting through the back inner upper thigh. Hug the right knee in, shoulders away from the ears. Back to your breath, soften the edges of your mouth. Relax your jaw, notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. Stay with it. And then modify if necessary. Once you've felt what you're feeling in this shape and it's, it's, it's wanting, you're wanting more or wanting less, uh, make that decision after observation. Observation, reflection. And then left knee to the floor. Walk back up. Walk your right foot over to the left. And then widen your right knee out to the right. Scissor your left knee forward, left or right foot back. So as you can see, this is kind of a, uh, a upright pigeon pose. So the hips are lifted. So either choose to stay here. You might fold forward a little bit, keeping the knee lifted, foot flex strongly. You might choose to stay here, lift the back knee. So it's a very active pigeon shape. So uh, I'm going to reveal our peak pose today as a flying pigeon. So this is a direct prep for that pose because we are going to uh, try to get the shin up underneath, uh, up behind the arms, up into the armpits actually. Uh, and then we're gonna just start flying around the room like, um, birds <laughs> like pigeons <laughs> okay left knee to the floor get out of there uh, let's walk the right foot forward and just do a little counter uh, runner stretch there by extending the left heel forward pulling the right toes right knee right hip towards the back of the mat you might have your hands propped up on something or you might walk your hands forward if you'd like to fold over the right leg Chin to chest, forehead towards or to the leg. Push out through the base of the right big toe, pull back through the toenails. And guess what? We have to do all of that on the second side. Right foot grounds and send the right leg back. Inhale to lift the left leg. Look to the top of your mat and exhale. Lunge your left foot between your hands. Set up onto fingertips, bald fist or blocks on either side of your front foot as you once again establish that lunge. And this time we're gonna bend the right knee to the floor. I didn't mention on the first side, but often padding underneath the right knee is a good option for most people. Scissor the right knee forward, pull the left hip, left foot back as you bring your hands to your front thigh. Interlace your fingers, prop up your chest, Shoulder blades on the back, shoulder blades down the back, collarbones broad, chest lifted, and then expand. As you contract, expand and contract. 
How do you do both those things at the same time? They're kind of the opposite things. Life is full of paradox I'm learning to embrace. Lift through the right inner upper thigh, wrap the right outer hip down and forward. Arms at your side, shoulders roll back, palms open forward. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, palms touch. Lift up out of the heart space, draw back through the arms. So biceps come behind the ears, tilt the gaze up, tilt the chin up, and then curl back when and if you'd like to. And then chest forward, arms forward, head comes forward, hands frame the front foot, and walk the left foot over to the left a couple of inches. Hands to the inside of the left leg, hug the left leg into the left arm. Either choose to stay here or start to walk the hands forward. Perhaps the left forearm comes down to the mat. Perhaps the right forearm comes down. Interlace the fingers or palms in uh, prayer. Left. Le left leg hugs to the left shoulder, so that adduction, drawing the leg in towards the middle line, choose to stay here or lift the back knee off of the floor, lifting through the right inner upper thigh, expansion and contraction, drawing the feet in towards the middle, right foot forward, left foot back, and then extend from the left inner groin out through the left inner heel, from the left inner groin out through the left inner knee. Shoulders away from the ears, heart melts down and forward, soften the jaw, breathe the breath. And lower the knee. Walk the hands back. Walk the left foot over towards the right. Flex the right foot or the left foot so the right ankle is straight as you widen the left knee out to the left. The knee is lifted up off the floor. Either choose to stay here, walk the hands forward, possibly bringing the forearms down. Square the chest forward, lift through the back inner thigh, lift the right knee off of the floor. So targeting the left hip, prepping us for this um, attempted arm balance, the flying pigeon. Kind of sounds like a magic trick, doesn't it? Flying pigeon. It's pretty magical. Okay, I'm sick of this. Right knee to the floor. <laughs> Walk your left foot over to the left a little bit. Slide your left heel forward. Pull back through your left toes. Lengthen along the back of the left leg. Pull up through the top of the left leg. Chin and chest forward. Walk the hands forward or prop the hands, lower the forearms down or don't. Round the chin to the chest, forehead towards or to the knee. Communicate with the back of the left leg. Communicate with the space between the vertebra along the back of the spine. Okay. Shift forward, press back plank position, skip the flow if you want to. Bend the knees, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. Exhale, lower down to the floor, tuck the toes, engage the legs, shoulder blades on the back. Another exhale, and back to plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale, hip shift back, three breaths in down dog. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Last biggest breath in, bend the knees, draw back through the sides of the waistline, shift the shoulders forward, look forward, exhale, and arrive at the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, palms to shins. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, sweep your arms out, up and overhead, reach up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to your side, shoulders back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, rise halfway. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, send the legs back, plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. 
Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Shoulders on the back, engage the legs with your next exhale. Push up from the floor. Inhale and plank. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge the right foot forward. Once again, our favorite lunge pose. Okay, from here, hands to hips, elbows point skyward, draw back through the sides of the waistline. We're gonna hop the back foot forward a few inches. Angle the upper body forward. Okay, totally unprofessional here. Break, get a block, put it at the top of your mat. Okay, off the top of your mat, in front of you. Back to that shorted, shortened lunge. Hands to hips, elbows on the back, collarbones broad, lean the upper body forward, and then kick off the back leg into a warrior three pose. Hips are at an even height, draw up through the right hip, wrap the left outer hip down, push down through the right leg, lift into the right kneecap, push back through the left leg, broaden the collarbones, reach the heart forward, arms back, arms out, arms forward, look forward, reach forward, five, four, three, two, and one. Left hand to the hip, right hand, to the floor or to a block, transitioning into half moon pose. Make sure the right toes remain pointing straight ahead with the left hand on the hip, wrap the left hip on top of the right hip. Broaden across the front of your pelvis, push out through the left foot, lengthen through the tailbone. Left shoulder on the back, stack the hips, stack the ribs, stack the shoulders. Look towards the left wall, Find something that's not moving. Extend the left arm up, maybe even look up. Extend forward to the crown of your head, back through the sole of the left foot. Open up across the chest. Okay, we're gonna transition here. Left hand back to the hip. Wrap the left outer hip towards the floor. Pass the block into the left hand and shift the block over to the left. Now right hand to the right hip. Lift into the right hip and then begin to revolve your left ribs towards the right. Moving into a revolved half moon pose. Right shoulder on top of left, right arm to the sky, push back through the left foot, lift through the back inner thigh, extend through the crown of the head. Five, four, three, two, one, look down, hand down, step the left leg back, lunge, plant the hands, right leg back, downward facing dog, Second side, inhale, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat, exhale, lunge the left foot between your hands. Okay, set it up, um, hands to hips, elbows towards the ceiling, draw back through the sides of the waistline, Take the ch square the chest forward, take the gaze forward, step the back foot in. With the hands on the hips, square the hips, and then kick off the back leg, shift the chest forward, chest parallel to the floor, right thigh parallel to the floor, lift into the left kneecap, lift into the left hip, wrap the right outer hip down as you lift through the right inner thigh. Push back through the foot, reach forward through the heart, arms on the, arms back, arms out, arms forward, reach forward, look forward, five, four, three, two, and one. Left hand to the block, right hand to the hip, with the hand on the hip, with the left toes pointing straight ahead, begin to wrap the right hip on top of the left hip, lifting through the right inner leg. Push down through the left foot, lift into the left kneecap, draw the left hip away from the left armpit to keep the left side of the body long. Maybe the right arm goes up, stacking the hips, stacking the shoulders, broad across the pelvis, broad across the chest. Maybe the gaze goes forward, maybe the gaze goes up. Maybe it does not. Half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. Parabritta Ardha Chandrasana, revolved half moon pose. Right hand back to the hip. Wrap the right outer hip down. Lift through the right inner thigh. <laughs> okay, right hand to the block. Left hand to the left hip. Lift into the left hip. Hips are now parallel at the same height. Revolve your right ribs now towards the left wall, trying to stack your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder, left arm to the sky, extend through the crown of your head, push back through your right foot, lift through your right inner thigh, lift into your left kneecap, five, four, three, two, 
Three, two, one. Hand down. Walk the hands back. Lunge the right foot back. Plant the hands. Send it back. Downward facing dog. Let's do another flow if you want to. Inhale, forward plank. Exhale, lower down, method of your choice. Inhale, curl up into your back bend. Exhale, lower all the way down to the floor. <laughs> Engage your legs, lift your kneecaps, lengthen your tailbone. Shoulders on the back. Exhale, push up. Inhale, plank. And exhale, press back. Downward facing dog. Three breaths in and out. In and out. Last biggest breath in, bend the knees, draw back through the sides of the waistline, shift the chest forward, look forward, exhale, and arrive at the top of your mat, fold in. Inhale, palms to shift, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, circle the arms out, up and overhead, and exhale, hands through heart center, and arms to your sides, Take a moment in Tadasana. Become your mountain. Connect with the strength of the earth. Rise up into the sky. Perhaps you'd like to close your eyes at this moment. Recognize that the practice so far is resonant in this moment. That life, your life, life on earth so far is resonant in this moment. Don't miss it. Be here now. Surrender to each breath. Flutter your eyes open if they're closed. Checking the clock covertly here. Okay, so 60 minutes just goes by in a flash, does it not? It's not over yet, but I have to keep it in mind that it will be over. And I promised a flying pigeon. So uh, this is a bus stop pose. And if you've not heard me make that reference before, um, you're probably familiar with the bus and it has stops. So uh, the bus is going along, uh, giving you different options of where to be, where to be in space. And uh, when you are at a place and you're like, this is, this is as far as I need to go on this bus route, uh, stay there. Uh, okay. And maybe next time you get on the bus, uh, you'll get off at a different stop. Okay. So left foot is going to ground. So this is going to be our uh, mystical, magical flying pigeon pose. Left foot grounds, hands to hips, right knee, right toes turn out. Flex the right foot and we're gonna cross the right ankle over the left thigh. So you're making that uh, figure four shape with your legs. Okay, that's a bus stop. Okay, second bus stop. Hinge at the hips, bend the left knee. So this is gonna give you a challenge for balance. It's gonna give you a hip stretch. Uh, it's gonna strengthen the left quad. So this is a great place to be. Bus stop two. Bus stop three, fold even more forward. Bring your fingertips to, uh, to your mat. Or if uh, the mat's too far, you can use a prop in the form of a big book or a block. Okay, bus stop three. Bus stop four, you might try to nuzzle your shin behind your arms. If your shin lands somewhere in the middle of your tricep muscles, you might expect some bruises on that area tomorrow. Because <laughs> it's not comfortable. Um, 
If you have the space, you're going to bring the shin high up into the armpits as much as you can. And you're going to try to hook, this is my right foot, I'm going to try to hook my right foot around the outside of my left arm. Okay, bus stop four. Bus stop five is to launch forward. So I'm going to walk my hands forward, shift my chest, hips, everything's going to start to move forward as I bring my the weight of my lower body back basically onto the back of my right arms, hence the potential bruising. Kick my heel to my bottom and attempt to fly my pigeon. Majestic flying pigeon. Ah, could you not call a pigeon a rock dove? I'm going to call this sequence rock dove. <laughs> okay. At least that's what my bird bingo uh, game that I play with my children calls a pigeon. Whew, I just need to like talk a little bit so that I don't have to do that again right away. So that was, got some heat, internal heat happening here. It's coming all out in my face. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know who you are, one live viewer, but I'm imagining you're my brother. Uh, which is cool. I like him. Uh, he read my children a book today about Coco Chanel and it was very well illustrated. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> okay, so now that I've uh, chit-chatted a little bit, I'm ready to do the second side. Okay, so now the right foot's going to ground, ground down, root it in, and then turn your left knee, left toes out to the left like so. Bus stop one, we're going to make our figure four with our legs. So just opening up across the front of the pelvis, widening out through the left inner knee. Bus stop two, we're going to hinge at the hips, sink the hips back and down. Again, great quad stretch. No, not quad stretch. Great uh, quad strength. Great hip opener. Great balance. Okay, bus stop three. Hands to the floor in front of you. Or to bricks, or to whatever prop you have. Next bus stop, lift onto the toes. Try to get the shin up into the armpits, hooking the right foot around, the left foot around the right outer arm. Palms to the floor, hands shoulder width distance apart, just like DFD, downward facing dog. Okay, upper body shifts forward. Lighten those toes, kick that butt ears. And then extend the right leg back. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, what am I gonna chat about now? <laughs> I'm just gonna let it hang forward. So if you're like me and a waterfall pose would feel good, do it. I trust you. Okay. Swing your legs forward and come to lie on your back. Oh boy. It's nice to be here, is it not? Arms at our sides. Heels draw in, knees hip width distance, feet parallel. And we're gonna take, we're gonna build some bridges here. We're gonna first, okay, you close your eyes. Just picture, you know, I love a little bridge, a little, you know, footbridge over a small creek. So that's our first bridge. That's the first bridge we're gonna build with our bodies. Press your feet down and just lift the hips up. This bridge ain't big, but it's doing the trick. It's getting us over those, um, it's getting us over the creek. Extend through the knees, lift through the outer hips, lengthen through the tailbone. Feel a nice little quad stretch. And lower your bridge. Walk your feet apart, let the knees fall together, hand to the belly, hand to your heart. Soft gaze at the ceiling or eyes closed as you reconnect with the breath and the body. 
You might attempt to first expand the abdomen and then the chest as you inhale. Contract the chest and then the abdomen as you exhale. Okay, so our next bridge, our next bridge honestly is probably going to have some cars that need to go over the bridge. So it's going to need to be a little, a little bigger, a little, uh, yeah, just bigger. So think bigger for this one. If you like the stream, stick with the stream. Knees, hip width distance, feet parallel, arms at your sides, press the feet down, interlace your fingers behind your back. Tuck your shoulder blades one at a time, one time, two times, three times, four times, however many times you like to tuck your shoulder blades underneath your back so that your chest is lifted, your spine is curling away from the floor, press down through your inner feet, lift through your outer hips, and chin to chest. So as you look down the front of your body in this pose, you might think, Oh, my bridge is lopsided. That car is just going to fall off one side. So if that is the case, start to adjust your bridge from the inside. So consider that there's a lung attached with that corresponding side of the bridge that looks a little bit shorter, a little bit dangerous. Try to expand that lung. Try to direct breath into that lung to even out your bridge. Easier said than done. And lower your bridge back down. Untuck your shoulders. Take your feet as wide as the mat. Let your knees fall together. Hand to heart. Hand to the belly. Feel the breath. Move the breath. Arrive with the breath. Okay, so I'm from California. I'm not from the Bay Area, but I'm from California and I have an affinity for the Bay Bridge. Just kidding, I meant the Golden Gate Bridge. Bay Bridge, also cool. I can't do a bridge that big. But uh, we're, gonna tr we're gonna attempt for the Golden Gate Bridge and this is gonna be a bound bridge pose. So if you'd like to follow me into a bigger bridge, arms at your sides, and two options for the bound bridge. First option would be to slide the palms underneath the heels, keeping the feet parallel, knees hip width distance apart, shoulders on the back. Second option is to grab the outer ankles. So you'll see, you can see me, my heels lifted up with that just based on my physical proportions. But then once uh, I start to lift the hips, I can get my feet back down as I tuck my shoulder blades deeply underneath my chest and become the Golden Gate Bridge, not, a, not over a stream, not over a river, but in, over an entire bay. Inner thighs down, outer hip lifts, tailbone lengthens, chin to chest, looking down the front line of the body, checking the specs, trying to make sure my bridge is safe. And lower down. Take the feet as wide as the mat, knees fall together, hand to heart, hand to the belly. Back to the breath. Rapidly decelerating towards the end of our practice. Arms out to a T, feet as wide as the mat, exhale, knees fall to the right. Inhale, knees come through center and exhale, knees left. Inhale through center and exhale, knees to the right once more, this time flexing the right foot and hooking the right ankle to the outside of the left thigh, if that feels okay for the knee and the low back. Breathe here, releasing the left inner thigh towards the floor, possibly feeling an extension and expansion across the front of the left hip. Head heavy. Shoulder blades on the back, collarbones broad, fingers soft, palms open. And 
and unhook, recenter. Exhale, knees to the left. If it feels okay for the knee, okay for the low back, hook the left foot to the outside of the right thigh. Let the weight of the left leg pull the right inner thigh deeply towards the floor, again creating an extension across the front of the right hip as the upper body stays um, neutral, stays passive. And uncross, knees back to center. Lift the feet, uh, cup the knees with the hands, and then push the knees into the hands as you rock the knees side to side, massaging the sacral spine from left to right, right to left. This doesn't, this movement doesn't need to be as big as it possibly can be. Okay, circles with the knees. Again, this movement does not have to be as big as it possibly can be. This is more of a therapeutic uh, movement. I used to really take my knees as, uh, as, big, as big as circles as I possibly could make them, and then my back would bother me. <laughs> like, but I have to make big circles. If they're not, if I can do it, I have to do it. Not, not true. <laughs> Turns out not true. Okay, uh, knees in and up towards the armpits and then take hold of the outer feet, shins perpendicular to the floor for happy baby, side to side. Feet together, knees apart, interlace your fingers around the outer edges of your feet in a reclined butterfly, reclined bound angle, extension through the inner thighs, contraction through the outer hips, length through the lower spine. And finally, draw your knees in, wrap your arms around your legs, grasping forearms or elbows or wrists, whatever you can reach, and then give yourself a hug. You're cool, you did it. Uh, chin to chest, forehead towards the knees, squeeze in. Thank you for coming to class and serve your name here. And let it go. Extend out through your legs. And I know, I know. I already went over 60 minutes. Give me a break. So sue me. I'm going to go over a little more because I think a savasana just sounds like the right thing to do right now. Uh, have you read Harry Potter? You know, it's like we're on Felix Felicis and we just know the right thing to do and it's savasana. Um, okay. <laughs> Take a blanket or hard pillow to the baseboard of a wall if you would like to do legs up the wall in lieu of an inversion today. So if you have a strap and you would like to take a, take a little bit of time to make a loop in your strap, maybe about a uh, 12 inch wide loop, that is a nice thing to have for legs up the wall. So I'm going to slide my bottom to the wall, lie back, swing my legs up the wall, and then shift my hips up onto my folded blanket or my folded blanket equivalent so that my hips are on the blanket and my ribs are on the floor. Okay, this is where my loop comes in. If you have the loop, totally not necessary, but if you have it, you might hook it around your ankles. It just gives you a, a better sense of security when you just completely release the weight of your legs so that there's no feeling that there's going, they're going to um, they're going to splay out to either side of the room. Arms at your sides, shoulders tucked gently underneath you, palms turned up, eyes closed. Again, consider that this moment 
resounds with the energy from your practice. Allow your body to be a conduit of this energy in this moment. Take some time to set yourself well. To put your body in a position that feels safe and supported. And in reaching that posture, Consider the idea of surrender to the moment. What would it mean to live in this space in this supported um, in this supported body in this supported shape challenge of this pose is to be present in mind and body even when there's nothing to do Okay, we're going to start to move out of this shape. If this is just where you want to be for now, then you might stop the recording, give yourself more time here. Otherwise, start to breathe consciously, and in doing so, you'll likely start to deepen and slow the breath. Slide the feet down the wall. 
If you have the strap, remove it. Right arm along your right ear, and then roll onto your right side, transitioning from our corpse position to this fetal shape. Push your way back up to a seated pose with the eyes closed. Just as we began, send root down, send, send roots down through the legs and hips, and rebound energy from the earth up along the spine, up through the crown of your head, up to the sky. Let's today bring hands onto the heart. Can you feel in your hands the ebb and flow of the breath? perhaps the beat of your own heart. We'll close practice with the single sound of OM. Exhale completely and inhale for OM. throughout this evening's practice. The light in me recognizes, recognizes and bows to the light in you. Namaste. now that means you stayed with me um, yeah please let me know if you have any feedback um, technical or um, not so technical <laughs> let me know how I can uh, change my personality I'm just kidding um, but yeah I'd love to hear from you if you are watching live or if you're watching the recordings please reach out I would love to feel connected um, yeah, so uh, I'm open to suggestions, things that you would like to uh, work on, things that you, um, yeah, things that you'd want to do in class, if you're doing the classes. Um, I'm here for you. Monday of class, 90 minutes. Tuesday class, 10 a.m., 75 minutes. This class, 5.30 p.m., um, 60 minutes. Okay. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, please get in touch via my phone. If you know my phone number, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, if you don't have a connection, if you're not connected to me in any of those ways, please uh, send an email through the Athens public web or Athens public email. Okay.